Okay, you just got your car professionally tuned. You set up your boost control, your nitrous control, your launch control, whatever other damn control you got and you are ready to go to the racetrack. Maybe you've made an arrangement with your tuner for the first time you go to the track, he's gonna log in or come with you and make adjustments for you, or maybe every single time, that's the plan. But at some point in time, there's gonna be a day where your tuner is not available to make changes for you, and you don't want to not be able to go to the track or be completely stuck as a result of that. So there are just a handful of settings in the computer that are very straightforward, very easy to adjust that if you can get familiar with them, even if you're horrified and scared of the laptop, that will make your life and your tuner's life a whole lot easier. It's just kind of the stuff that you should know if you wanna go racing. Okay, I have the Holly V6 software open, which would be for the HPs and the Dominators. If you have Sniper or Terminator X, this will also apply to you. The Holly EFI software is a little more complex, so this will show a couple more options. If you have one of the other two systems, uh, you just will have less things to choose from, so it'll be even more straightforward. Okay, this is just a Holly base map. I turned on some of these ICFs. If it's anything in your file that's already set up and configured, you're gonna have all of the custom ICFs up here. So we're just gonna assume for the sake of this that everything's already configured. So probably the number one thing that you need to be able to adjust, because if you go from a prep track to a not prep track or no prep street racing, and then you go to a radio prep track, uh, this is gonna be the primary thing that you're gonna have to change. So if we go to this ECU up here, system ICF, ignition parameters, and our rev limiter, either number one or number two. The Sniper and Terminator X do not have a rev limiter number two, they just have rev limiter number one. So if you were unsure as to which one, if it was rev limiter number one or rev limiter number two that was controlling your launch RPM, if you go to the pin map, generally speaking, you'll see like rev limiter number one will have the trans brake launch next to it. Uh, and then rev limiter two down here is by itself. So in this situation, our rev limit number one is our launch RPM. And you can usually tell by the, the RPM itself too. Spark high only is the most common for this, but again, all of this stuff should be set up. So for the sake of this example, we're assuming everything is, is pretty close. Uh, maybe you spun the tires a little bit, so you just need to go to 3,800 RPM. Or maybe it's too soft and you wanna to go to 4,300 RPM. So a small change goes a long way with this one. Uh, again, I would recommend having conversation with your tuner ahead of time about all of this stuff. Be like, hey, you set me up at 3,500 RPM. What, what RPM range should I experiment with if you're not available to help me? Okay, the second one that we will look at is our boost control. This is for the turbo guys. So this turbo looking icon is our boost ICF. <clears throat> and here under boost setup, our trans brake input launch. This one here is gonna be how much dome pressure we're applying while we're on the trans brake. So if you wanted to go from seven to nine, you just do that right there. And the next one with Holly and CO2, unless it's a street car or something, almost all the race car stuff's doing boost first time. Uh, if you were using one of these other options, it wouldn't be grayed out, but for this example, we'll do boost first time. And this is how we're going to control the boost going down the racetrack. 60 seconds. So again, hopefully your tuner set up the axis properly, but generally speaking, you're going to need the most control in say the first two seconds. Uh, there's no reason to be controlling this out to 60 seconds unless your car is really a big fat turd and takes 60 seconds to get down the racetrack. So let's say we're going to put two seconds here. If you highlight, you can either right click and click on fill row values or just push the R key. That will set that up. Um, let's just say we're gonna go to eight seconds here. It kind of, sometimes it'll fill itself out correctly. Sometimes it won't, it looks pretty good there. So just, you know, make sure you have numbers down here that make sense. Uh, and then for the actual boost values up here at the top, uh, there's two ways you can change it. You can either just click and drag and drop these, or uh, you can numerically change the numbers here. Uh, generally speaking, you're gonna have some sort, is, of a shape to this curve, you know, whether it's rounded off or whatever, uh, or linear. So if, again, if, if you mess it all up and you just want to put it back, just highlight R, linearize it. Uh, or if you wanted to speed this up, you can change all this to 40, highlight, push R, and it'll give you this linear curve. Maybe you want to round it off here. 
Or maybe you smoked a bunch of crack for breakfast and... I get high because it's just a whack. This is what your curve looks like. Uh, you're probably never gonna make it down the track like that, so um, make sure you have some sort of a, a curve there. Generally speaking, I think your tuner will probably have the max boost that he wants you to run in this table. So if he tells you, you can turn it up some, just make sure you have a conversation with him about this first. So you go from 40 to 50 PSI, you know, car might not be tuned up there and you might send the rods out of it or something like that. Another thing you can do is you put zero in the last row over here. Basically at this point at eight seconds, it's just gonna turn all the CO2 off. Uh, it's gonna save the solenoids a little bit, possibly save you some CO2. The next one we'll look at is, I would say primarily for like the blower guys, but naturally aspirated can use it, turbo you can use it too. So this would be, especially on like a turbo car, the boost would be more of like a harsh adjustment. It's gonna make a bigger difference. And then if you wanna make some really fine adjustments, if we just go here to system ICF, basic IO, timing retard, you can activate these timing retard stages usually gonna be set up at activated input re release, which means it's gonna start this timer down here uh, once you let go of the trans brake button. You can do this off of RPM or whatever, but time's more, more common. Uh, you can see here like the default values just went to 99, which doesn't make much sense. So you can just linearize that if you want. And so in this example here, it will be removing timing for five seconds, which is obviously a little excessive. Again, you're the assumption here is that this is already set up for you. So if you just wanted to take one degree out of it, you can right click, offset selected, minus one. So it will give you less retard. Since this is a retard table, the positive values are how much timing it is removing. Uh, so if you try to put in a negative value, it won't let you do it. So another one here under basic IO is the staging, which would be like your bump on a turbo car. So if you're actually using it here, then this is where you would make those adjustments if need be. If you're not making big changes, you, you can probably get away without having to change this one. But if you're changing your launch RPM from 3000 to 6000 RPM, then this is probably gonna need a little bit of work. And then the next thing that we got is custom tables, which is this uh, t uh, you know, like fuel table looking icon. And this is where a lot of guys are gonna have their bump set up uh, along with a bunch of other things. So the sky is the limit. You can have your 1D and your 2D tables. Uh, you can see, see if like all of these don't have anything, but this one has a green dot, which means this table is active. So if this was a boost offset, a timing retard table, or you know, whatever the case may be, um, this is where you would make the changes to this. This one is going to be very different depending on who tuned the car and how they set it up. So again, if your tuner wants you messing with these tables, just have a conversation with them ahead of time about this. For the nitrous guys, definitely make sure you have a conversation with your tuner on this one as there's a thousand different ways to set this up. But for the sake of this example, uh, if we, here's our stage one. And if we go down here, we have our time-based progressive control. So this is just like the boost control. You know, you're typically gonna have some sort of a ramp to 100%, which would be like full active. If we wanted to linearize it, same thing. You can highlight it, push R. You'll find the more you do it, the more of a shape your car is gonna have. Maybe it doesn't want a bunch down here. Um, or, you know, maybe you're feeling crazy and you got something like this. That is that for that one. And the last thing, and this one's a little more complex, but just so that you're aware of it, if you have, uh, so we don't have this ICF on this one. So if we go to toolbox, add individual configuration, traction, default. Now we have this burnout looking tire mark one. So if your tra traction control is enabled, uh, you'll either be using, so you can see this is not enabled, now it is, either drive shaft or crankshaft RPM. And if this is enabled, uh, you have your rev limit, retard A, retard B, and then your base. The base is basically the target, and then the other ones are gonna, where you're gonna want the ECU to do something. So if your crankshaft or drive shaft RPM goes higher than your target, and you want to start pulling timing, this is where you would make these changes. So just keep this one in mind that if you turn the boost up 10 PSI and you have traction control enabled, you're probably gonna to have to change your drive shaft curve or your crankshaft curve. Again, I think most of you guys, if you're 
getting to this point, either you're far more familiar with the system than you know some of the guys that are, are new to it, uh, or your tuner has already stepped in and, and maybe is giving you a couple different tune-ups to use for this, or you're on the phone about it, something. So uh, this one, if you're watching this video, you're probably not using this, but just something else to be aware of. All right, this one was pretty short and to the point. Again, I can't stress enough that it's gonna be extremely beneficial to you to make some of these minor changes yourself. That way you're not just completely reliant on your tuner being available every minute of every day. Again, I can't stress enough that you should absolutely have a conversation with your tuner about these changes uh, before you just start messing with it. If you're out street racing at three o'clock in the morning and you call your tuner asking him to make a launch RPM adjustment, he's probably not gonna be very happy with you. So in those situations, I'm sure he'd be uh, more than willing to walk you through what you might need to change ahead of time. There's some people that just never wanna to touch the laptop ever in their whole lives and that's fine too. So maybe this doesn't apply to you, in which case you probably aren't watching this video. But either way, that's gonna do it for this one. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.